series here. Uh, the title is so simple, I'm almost embarrassed. Four Promises for God's People, all right? And out of the 8,810 promises, we're just going to look at four of them. And uh, so uh, it's going to be an interesting little series we're doing here. But these four promises are essential if you're going to live a successful Christian life as a believer in Jesus, all right? So open your Bibles, if you would, or your bulletin, or uh, it'll be on the screen as well, to John chapter 8. John chapter 8, and begin reading at verse number 34. This is what the Word says today. Jesus answered them, Most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. If the son makes you free, you'll be what? Free. Completely free. Not just a little bit free, right? Not just sometimes free, but free indeed. Amen. Would you bow your hearts today and let's ask God to touch our lives through His Word today. Heavenly Father, we lift up this message to you today and I pray, God, that you'd give me the strength and grace and ability to share your Word, God, in a, in a way that will edify your people and bring us to that place of deeper understanding and a greater walk. And Lord, I pray, God, that you would allow these truths of these four promises to penetrate our hearts on every week, especially today, let us leave this place with the knowledge that we are free in the name of Jesus. Amen. I believe that every person who is fully trusted in the shed blood of Jesus for their salvation needs to completely and fully grasp the incredible, amazing words of the promise that Jesus gave here. If the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. And I want you to understand that the greatest human need that any person on the planet has is derived from the fact that the human race is a fallen race, right? We live in a fallen world. According to the Bible, every human being on the planet, including me, including you, uh, was born into sin. And we live in a world that's tainted by sin. The scripture's very plain that it is our sin that separates us from God. We were born into this world sinners and it didn't take long for our Adamic nature, our fallen nature to rise up and sin ourselves. And so the truth is there's absolutely nothing that we can do in and of our own selves to save ourselves. The scripture tells us this, that there is none righteous, no not one. All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so now we get to the good news. Anybody ready for good news today? All right. Amen. The good news is that we needed someone to save us, and his name is Jesus. Amen. His name is Jesus. Jesus came to set us free from sin. And contrary to what many people in our world teach and preach today, uh, Jesus didn't die for our negativity. Our bad feelings, our self-esteem, our poverty, our hurts. You say, well, is Jesus concerned about all those things? Of course he is. He's concerned about every aspect of our life. But you see, the basic message of the Bible and the chief reason Jesus came to die was to pay the penalty for sin, right? And once that penalty was paid, when Jesus was on the cross, you remember the words that he said, three powerful words. He said, it is finished. Aren't you glad? What he was saying is the price is paid. The wrath of God is satisfied. Jesus knew that the death, that his death on the cross would satisfy the judgment of God against sin. And that because of Christ's death on the cross, the good news is we can have forgiveness of sins, right? If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But Jesus did more in his death, in his burial, in his resurrection, then provide forgiveness for sins. He also provided for us freedom 
from sin. Come on. How many of you believe that? Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. In fact, if you look over in Luke chapter 4, he, Jesus quoted the prophet Isaiah as he spoke about his own mission on the earth. And this is what he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted. And then look at the next phrase, to proclaim liberty to the captives. You see, the enemy wants to captivate mankind with sin and keep us in captivity. But Jesus came to say, listen, by my death, burial, and resurrection, you can be free. Amen. I love the old hymn, right? It's an old hymn. It says this, he breaks the power of canceled sin. He sets the prisoner free. His blood can make the foulest clean. His blood availed for me. Is there anybody today who's trusted in the shed blood of Jesus? Amen. But in order to be set free from sin, there's three things we've got to understand. We're going to touch them really quickly today. First of all, sin makes people its slave. Am I right? John chapter 8 and verse 34, Jesus said, Most assuredly I say to you, how many of you realize when Jesus said, most assuredly, what he was saying is, hey, 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 listen, listen, listen. What I'm telling you is the truth. He said, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And you don't have to go very far in our culture to find people who have become slaves to sin, right? The man who has to have a drink every day and drinks until he gets drunk every day. How many of you know he's a slave to sin? He, he, he thinks he's free to do what he wants, but actually he, alcohol is his master. It will ruin his life, his relationships. Those who do illegal drugs or abuse prescription drugs soon discover that, that, that it gets out of control for them and sin becomes their master, right? The man who, or the woman, by the way, who is clicking on items of pornography that they should not how many of you realize they become a slave to sin and it's easy for us as believers to kind of put all those more vulgar types of sins over here and say yeah they're slaves to sin but the scripture says all sin causes us to be a slave to sin amen if we're filled with hate it will ultimately control you uh, if you're filled with prejudice, it will control you. And there's, you know, things like bitterness, gossip, envy, on and on and on. And, and you, what happens is when we sin, we actually give Satan legal access to put chains on us, spiritual chains of bondage. Now, if you tell a modern person that sin makes them a slave, many times they may just laugh at you and kind of smile. And they may say something like this, well, I can quit anytime I want to, okay? Okay, well, go ahead and do it then. Let's see, how you, let's see how you really progress in all of that. How many of you know that the only way to overcome sin is through the shed blood of Jesus? Amen? Amen. And I, my experience has been that the longer a person allows themselves to be entrenched in sin, wrapped up in it, tangled up in it, the Easy, the harder it is uh, for them uh, to, uh, you know, to, to find a place of freedom in their mind and in their heart. But Jesus can set them free the more entrenched in bondage a person becomes. Let me give you the second thing we've got to understand, all right? The path to freedom is becoming a son or a daughter of God. Do I have any sons or daughters of God in the house? Are there any children of the Lord here today? Amen. I love this next part. Jesus said, and a slave does not abide in the house forever right the slave doesn't stay in the house he gets sent back to the slave quarters right but I like this it says a son abides forever a son or daughter abides forever now our relationship with God is based on the faith that we have in Christ it is our faith in Christ's finished work on the cross and and it's by his grace that we can become the children of God I love John chapter 1 in verse number 12, it says this, But as many as received him. How many of you say, I've received him? Amen. But as many as have received him, to them he gave the right to become what? Children of God. Sons and daughters of God. To those who believe in his name. So here's the point today, church. The moment you put your trust and your hope in what Jesus has done for you, the moment you accept the sacrifice that he paid on the cross, the moment you believe that Jesus died, 
died for you, was buried and rose again, and you receive him as your personal Savior, something supernatural happens to you, right? Your name gets written in heaven in the Lamb's Book of Life. You become a brand new person. The old is passed away. All things become new. And as you repent of your sins and obey the gospel and confess your sins, you find forgiveness. Most people understand that. Amen. Your status in the kingdom changes from that of slave to sin to son or daughter of God. Come on. Can we give the Lord a big hand of praise today? How many of you say, I want to abide in the house of the Lord forever? And let me give you the third thing we've got to understand, all right? The moment you believe in Christ, you now have the ability to live free. How many say, I want to live free? Amen. I want to live free. I, now, you may not know it, walk in it, understand it, but you are free because the Word says, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. I don't know about you, but I want to be free. I don't want sin to be able to yank my chain. Come on. I don't want the devil to control me. I don't want my flesh to control me. I don't want the world's influences to control me. Or you, amen. Many years ago, January 1st, 1863, President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, right? The nation was approaching its third year of a very bloody civil war, and the proclamation declared this. It said, all persons held as slaves within the rebellious states are and henceforth shall be free. Right? It was a declaration of every slave in the United States of America that they were free. And once the South had been defeated, then the news began to spread that all of the slaves were free. I've got a question for you to consider today. How many of you think that all of those slaves that had been entrenched in slavery, how many of you think they immediately started to live free, act free, walk free, think free? No, they did. probably not. There might have been a few that did, but, the, but mo most of them probably did not do that. You want to know why? Because after a lifetime for many of them and even multiple generations of being in bondage and enslaved, it was very hard for them, first of all, even to accept the very fact that they were free. They needed to learn how to walk in that freedom, right? They needed how to think differently, act differently. Now, I'm telling you that because, you see, the same thing is true for you and I in this day and age in the spiritual sense, right? There are people who come to Jesus, and the truth is that sin has been their master for many, many years. And even though they've accepted Christ, their mind is still programmed by the world. Their mind is still programmed by the enemy, right? And, and they don't walk free, act free, think free, or talk free, but the, that does not negate the fact that in God they are free. Am I right? Because the Word of God tells us if the Son makes you free, you, you'll be free indeed. The Word of God is the truth, right? And so we've got to trust in Him. And so you say, well, what does all that mean for me? This is what it means for me, for me and for you. Do I have any believers here? You've accepted Christ. This is what it means for you. All right, sin has no claim on you. Come on. Fear has no right to dominate your life. Depression has no right in your life. Addiction has no right to dominate your life. You say, well, pastor, do you believe that we can just be instantaneously sanctified? Oh, how I wish I could believe that. I would love to believe that, but I cannot do that. And so what we have to do is we have to grow up and become more Christ-like and more mature in Him. And we've got to learn how to live out this promise, right? The promise is true, but, it's a, but we have to learn in this world that we live in, in our lives, we've got to learn how to to live it out and work out our salvation with fear and trembling. And I just believe that our liberty is something that we've got to stand fast and hold on to, right? 
we got to guard this liberty, this freedom in Christ, right? Galatians 5.1 says this, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now, that means the legalism is a bondage. We don't want to be entangled in that, but we don't want to be entangled in sinful things either, right? Romans 6, 1 and 2 says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Shall we just go on sinning? 